Awesome. Thank you for watching. This is Grace at You Deserve Grace. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and follow us and also go to the website www.deservegrace.com. Today I'm talking about retirement, um, but more so about the transition into retirement. And to do that, I had to put on a my best grandpa sweater and also for Canadians who represent Cayman Islands um, for some right somewhere warmer becomes the, the the thought in mind so all right so when we talk about retirement it really can be um, such an exciting thing uh, but it, oh, it can also be such a sudden thing right um, if you've been planning it forever and you're fortunate enough to have the health to, and there's a lot of assumptions that we're making here, right? That, that our health um, allows us to enjoy the retirement that we dreamed of um, and also that, that we've been preparing financially for it. Um, so this conversation is more so about that emotional preparation for retirement because as much as those of us that are mid-year careers working, you know, or starting out, you may think, how does somebody struggle with retirement? Like, how, how can that possibly be um, an issue emotionally? And it is, it is a really um, big thing. So just small, so those are some of the assumptions that we're talking about. If you're sitting there financially and thinking, how do I even go about starting to prepare? Um, feel free to go to the website, deservegrace.com, or we have a quick conversation about that and send you to the right professionals that can help you um, develop the monetary side of the retirement plan. Otherwise, we can just help you um, coach you along and really trying to understand your why and what your rich retirement looks like. And that is something we'll get into a little bit later, but it's a very individual conversation. A lot of people don't realize that you know, as you're married, um, you go to work by yourself, right? Your spouse doesn't, isn't, you, you know, you might be an engineer, your spouse could be a chef, right? Um, you have such different careers and such different career choices. And, and you made these choices, you know, regardless. And so you spend 30, 40 years in such different industries. Um, if you're self-employed, it can be so different as well. And if, you know, somebody was a stay-at-home parent, again, like, you know, you've spent so much, assuming you've been married for a long time. And even if you haven't been married and joined each other later in life, um, it remains the same. You have spent so much of your lives differently. And with retirement comes a new 30 year period, hopefully, um, that I think you should be prepared to spend separately and or differently too, right? Um, and, I, and I think that's a thought, that's an emotional thought that we just need to write down and we'll talk about it later. So what I wanted to say, whenever we're out somewhere, um, you know, whether we're at dinner or we're at a resort or whatever the case may be, and I see like my favorite was this couple at uh, Jackknife, I think it's Jackknife or Jackfish Lake in Saskatchewan, shout out to Saskatchewan Lakes. Um, they were out, they were just sitting, it was like 6 a.m. Um, don't ask me why I'm out at 6 a.m. on a beach, separate story, but they were sitting there at 6 a.m. on the beach and they're reading and their backs are to each other and you know it was a beautiful morning that's why i was in the water at that time of day as well um but what struck me was how does this conversation happen with this couple do they come to the beach every day at 6 a.m you can tell they're not working anymore they're no longer working age but like you know how was that conversation had you know that on a long weekend we would be in rural saskatchewan reading a book at 6 a.m you know, backs against each other, and and, and that's what we're going to do in the morning. Um, and I think, you know, without knowing them, you know, I look at things like that. I'm like, is this a second marriage? Because so many times, you know, when you're married at a different age, um, and regardless, you're human being, your likes and dislikes change over the years. And so I always find that um, with couples that are, are in a second marriage, and this is from years of working with, with couples, um, you know, business owners, individuals, you know, in financial services, but I've always found those in the second marriage tend to have, that enter the second marriage, I should clarify later, tend to have more things in common than those who were married at a younger age. And I think that makes sense because people do transition, right? You change, like, I think I liked roller coasters or I might have tolerated a roller coaster earlier in my life, but now, no, I will, I will stand outside, right? Um, 
I'm not doing it. I'm not going on it. I'm not watching anyone I love on a roller coaster. And so that's, that's the kind of thing where I think about um, the likes and the dislikes. And so what I recommend for sure is think about transitioning. Um, think about it as a transition into retirement. I think the hard stop um, and the day after I retire, that's the day I'm going to start selling my house. That's the day I'm going to start living on a lower income. That's the day that, you know, I'm going to start going to these places or even moving to a resort town where you've only vacationed. I think that's what makes it harder. And a lot of people don't want to retire actually because they say, what am I going to do with my time? And a big part of that is because they've never given themselves pause to actually explore what it is they enjoy. So if you're one of those people, I think one of the things that we often talk about is doing a transition, right? Um, really think about it as a rolling transition and that's gonna be better for you emotionally. Um, much like someone who's pregnant, um, you've got 10 months to prepare for when that baby comes out. Um, and so you know you're going to, you know, ideally and hopefully if everything's set up financially, you're going to take some time off of work. So you know you've got 10 months to prepare yourself for lower income, right? Um, if you're able to work through your pregnancy. So there's no point in not saving extra or doubling up your mortgage payment, whatever you need to do in order to prepare yourself for that time when you're going to be in a lower income. And so same principle really applies to people as they're approaching retirement. So I would recommend you transition your income, right? So if you already know that, okay, we're going to have, you know, and it doesn't hurt to call your pension, to call your pension administrator and ask them, to call your financial advisor and ask them to do a chart that shows you how long you can live your invest on your investments for, to call Service Canada and ask them, they'll, you know, there's a chart online, you can figure out what your CPP and your OAS would look like. You can get the numbers of what your income is going to look like in retirement. And having those numbers, I think sometimes will help people be a little bit um, less anxious because now we know what we're dealing with, right? So when you're five years out, that's a good time to start looking at what do these numbers look like? Because there's a lot you can change in five years if you need to. And there's a lot you can start transitioning. So first part, income, find out and then start transitioning yourself now, income wise, to that lower income bracket. And if that means taking some of that money now and spending more of it traveling to those places that you plan on going to once you're retired, then that's a win-win, right? If it means taking some of that money now to pay down, you know, your mortgage or other debts or give to the children, save separately for them, whatever the case you want to do with that money, right? By reducing your income to what your retirement income is going to be and making that adjustment now, that's one of the easier way you can have you can start living in that transition right um the second one's expenses so same thing if you're going to sell downsize your house and that's a plan i'd recommend you start doing that sooner than later um you always want to at least have that completed at least 18 months before you actually retire and that's just because again emotionally you're going to have done a lot of the transitions in advance while you still have the distraction of work because sometimes we don't appreciate the ability to go to work and kind of share what's going on in our lives with these other people right there's there's something to be said about a third party someone with the bird's eye view that's not necessarily living your life and seeing in your life hearing what they have to say right and so that loss of community um, or change in community is something that needs to be adjusted for. And so one of the things I definitely recommend if you're planning on downsizing, moving to a different place, you know, have some of those steps already done and completed prior to retiring. Um, then that way you'll be able to see, okay, is this actually a lifestyle? You know, I've met people who have sold, downsized and hated the downsize thing, but now you're no longer working, your income's lower, so they can't qualify for what they would want to have done, right? So by doing that transition earlier while you're still working, you can actually see, is this what I want to do? And if it's not working, not fitting, while you're still working and you have the opportunity to still get a mortgage or do whatever you need to do, then you'll still have the ability to make that transition rather than doing it and then feeling cornered and feeling like there's no other way around it. So do that transition. Um, between each other, I'd recommend discussing like specifics, especially around potential grandkids. Cause a lot of times, uh, especially these days, people are retiring first and then becoming grandparents, 
right? Um, have that discussion about, you know, where you want to spend holidays, how flexible you want to be to accommodate the kids. I've got tons of couples I've worked with over the years who've always wanted to spend more time in the South. And then all of a sudden grandkids come and one spouse wants to spend more time in Canada, regardless of it's minus 30 or not, because they want to spend more time with the grandkids. So by having those discussions, even just bringing it up here and there, you know, Um, it goes a long way. So then at least that's not something that's a big shocker or a surprise to someone. And they say, well, you agree to this, right? Um, Then they're able to see that down the line. This might be something. Also giving, right? Giving up your time. If, If it's one of those things where you're like, I've always wanted to do a really long missions trip. You know, there's nothing wrong with actually starting to work with those organizations now, starting to figure out um, how those organizations work, um, getting to know people um, that are already doing missions and different things like that. I definitely recommend that. And if you have that opportunity to cut down your income that you're actually living on and you do have some extra, this would be a great place to put it, is to say, okay, this is the stuff that I want to be able to give to and be involved in. Um, it's definitely a good idea to start tapering in um, before you retire because then at least you'll already have a schedule. You'll have an idea of what this actually um, implies. And then, yeah, more so, I think the biggest thing, just be as transparent as possible, but also understand that you could change. You could definitely change your mind and what you want to do by transitioning early. You're giving yourself that flexibility to actually be able to transition um, at any point and make any changes that you feel like you would want to while you still have the flexibility of an income um, that's coming in and that you're able to control. And again, even in that tro- those transparent conversations, they shouldn't be about forcing someone to agree to what you want. Um, like I said before, you've gone to work by yourself for the last 30 years, right? You never forced your spouse to be a nurse. So why should you force your spouse to retire the way you want to, right? Um, I, I would expect that you know, you emotionally, as you're having those conversations, just have them with a listening ear without an ear to convince otherwise, and then be prepared to to go alone without any bitterness, without any frustration, and with just a, a heart to share, right? That this is what I did. You know, even if you go on a volunteer mission trip, you know, come back and share that, right? Explain to them like what that experience made you feel. Don't be like, oh, well, you didn't even want to go with me. I'm not telling you anything about my trip, but then be on the phone all the time with your friends telling them how it was, right? Um, there's nothing wrong with, with enjoying um, the retirement that you desired and figuring out what your rich retirement is. Um, extend that grace, right, to your spouse as well, because they've also spent 30 years, whether it was at home with the kids, and they're super excited about this opportunity now to, to really be able to do something more um you know and experience the world differently whatever that retirement means to them and with you as well so definitely extend um that grace to you to them and then also to yourself because you also deserve that grace and that congratulations for for being able to to get yourself to this place where you can enjoy um the rich retirement that you chose so thank you for listening again this is grace with you deserve grace um for any additional advice or comments www.deservegrace.com or follow us on youtube at deserve grace thank you